Hello everyone, it's Melissa. I am back again and today I am making a 12 by 12 layout for my son's back to school album. I do two separate layouts for each of my kids' books and then the layout that I shared on my last video before this was of the both of them which will go into our family 2018 album. I know it seems a little complicated but that's the way I do it. So um, we're starting off here. I have a black and white photo printed. It's my son and you saw that I had the product pulls and so I had six by six pads, doilies, punches, project life card, flare, miscellaneous dies, and labels. And in fact, I get them all used except for the doilies. So yay for that. Um, right now you see me using on a white piece of pattern paper from Lily B Designs, a Heidi Swap stencil that had pluses on it. And I was just using a makeup sponge and the fossilized amber oxide distress ink and I just put it on there let it dry you could use your heat tool and just random you see it's very messy but that's okay um, you see I also have pulled there a project life cut apart with the pencils on it I really thought that was fun and that I have decided already is going to act as my title card and I will in fact title this layout back to school and it's just it I just love it you know I mentioned in my last layout how much I enjoy working with school themed products I enjoy every uh, you know aspect of you know office supplies school supplies I was one of those kids that couldn't wait to get my school supplies every year. You know, school, I could take or leave it, but school supplies, <laughs> I was all in. And so I am going to attempt to, aside from this big turquoise piece of pattern paper that I'm going to use as my grounding piece behind my photo and my Project Life title card, I am going to use just scraps. And as you can see, I have to the right of my layout a stack of paper scraps that were all kept in with my school themed products and you know these are all from various you know whether they're from a obviously other layouts that I decided I really liked the colors so I just kept them you know mostly for tucking and adding accents of color you know, at the top of the page, the bottom of the page, uh, all sorts of stuff like that. So really to the right of the layout, I have just a stack of scraps and that's really all I'm going to use. So what you're going to watch me do here in the course of the next couple of minutes is just start at the top and start making my selections uh, from that stack. What I think, maybe keep something that inspires me or not. You see here, I even just found a partially punched piece of red pattern paper. I'm not sure why it's only partially punched, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to finish it off and I'm actually going to use it. So yeah, that's just the kind of stuff that I have hanging around in my bits. Just, uh, that's all you're going to see me do here for the next couple minutes. And I really enjoy this process because it's a lot of fun. You see here, I'm just like, oh yeah, sure. Let's Let's get this on here. And <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so like I mentioned, I used all but one of my pulls from my product jar, which is, you know, always exciting for me. I always use stamps, which if you've watched any of my videos, you know, they're in every layout, every project. And I love the ones that I ended up choosing for this project. And it was a lot of fun to get some of those elements on my page. Now you see I am just here uh, trimming up bits that were, you know, hacked at, messy. Um, so just trying to tidy them up. And the one thing I really like is how I have chosen to have a lot of actual white space on the photograph to um, the left side of my son and 
you know, in fact, I'm going to use that card to cover it, but kind of keep it where it's almost an element on my photo. So it's hard to explain, but I'm, I'm really liking how, you know, my new thing right now is, and other scrapbookers have talked about it, is really, you know, layering. You know, when you find your niche and you like it and that's what is keeping you successful at your goals. Like my goal is just to plug away at these. And, you know, if I think too much about it, layouts take me way longer than they should. So I am really liking just feeling free to just make my pictures wonky. You know, so yes, some I want straight, of course. You know, you have seen me with my ruler out quite a bit. But most of the time I just leave my pictures wonky, just tuck stuff wherever. I'm really liking the fact where I'm just pulling colors in and trying to you know, when I can use rules of three and when I can't, no big deal. But yeah, I'm, it's very freeing for me to use this new style of scrapbooking and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. So, and as you can tell, I've been cranking out a lot of layouts. And so I'm of course liking that. Okay. So yeah, here I am. Just keep going. I'm just pulling things and just seeing what's what. I end up you know, using my tag dies. I use some crochet twine from my stash. And as you'll see, like I mentioned, I use some stamps and just altering some elements that I have. Uh, I'm going to add my title with some alpha dies, which is fun because I, you know, I have about 10 different fonts of dies. Of course, I have my silhouette machine, but I have 10 different fonts and so it's fun to, you know, play around with them and mix and match them and get them um, used on projects. So here you see me. These are some Amy Tangerine circle tags and they're wood. I wasn't loving the actual circle in the tag itself so that will get covered up. And I already knew that I kind of wanted to use a tag on this page in a different spot. So one of the things, I don't know if you have realized this about me, but I do not leave a tag hole empty. I fill it all the time with twine or something. I, I just can't leave it. I don't know. So the reason why I decided to cover up that hole was because I knew I was already going to be threading that tag above my title, which is good because I have a die cut there that is a shape of an apple. And I will be adding that to there, and it fills that space, you know, wonderful. So here I'm showing you the stamp set I decided to use. It is called, it's from Lawn Fawn, and it's called Flying By. And with that index card that I had in my stash, a scrap, I stamped and die cut three paper airplanes. And I also die cut the apple in the leaf. And those are from your next stamp and they're a great they're a nice size and so right now I'm just using my Tim Holtz ink and I am using old paper and I'm distressing the paper airplanes just giving them a little dimension I think I in fact it don't show it in the video but I did use maybe my one of my lightest gray Copic markers and shade it in some of the areas on the plane. It's very faint, very um, subtle, but it's there and I like it. And next you're gonna see me use the gathered twigs, uh, fired brick, frayed burlap, and forest moss. And I'm gonna use those inks to add some shading to the apple and its pieces. I did in fact recut the apple in a brown scrap piece of cardstock and so what I essentially ended up doing in the end is I cut the stem off the red apple, layered the red bit on top of the brown, and then added the leaf. And so that gave my die cut a little more stability, being two layers, and also got, I mean, I could have used a marker to color the stem. Don't get me wrong, that would have been just as easy, but I wanted to give, that's just a piece of, really um, lightweight pattern paper from my stash so why not add another layer behind it for a little more stability so I, I chose to um, die cut it in brown so 
I am really liking this and just moving right along. This layout actually went very, very quickly. You know, those are the ones I love. Showing you a close-up here, but you'll get another, oops, you'll get another close-up at the end, of course. And I have pulled a piece of orange, which this is another scrap you can see, and I'm just going to use my same Stampin' Up notebook punch and go ahead and punch the edge of that. It's just a scrap, so it goes by very quickly, and I'm just going to need the littlest bit there to tuck in that little space. I have used a tag die from Studio Calico. You can see that in a yellow bit above my title. Also just a piece of craft colored pattern paper that I found from my stash there, that little pile. And I just tuck that back there. I have a October afternoon, I want to say, bit that says grade. And I will eventually add the number six in that spot. I'm going to start adhering my elements. You can see in the photo at this point that I have added a clip. It's a fun little, it's a different clip. It's from Stampin' Up! and uh, just to fill that space, give it a metal element there because you know I wasn't, there's no way we were doing this page without some sort of paper clip because you know that's back to school, office supplies, I love that kind of stuff so that definitely was going to get um, make its way on there at some point. So I'm just going to add my pieces of paper here, my notebook paper. It brings in so much texture, as you can see. I'm going to eventually, behind my corners and things, add some little mini dimensional dots from Stampin' Up. I'm going to do the same dimensional dots on the backs of these um, paper airplanes that I die cut from Lawn Fawn and you know I just love this this is just so fun you guys this card I just this setup is this was so easy and you can see that I hardly used anything I mean it came together so quick I'm so happy I have one more layout to do and it's for my daughter's first day for her book and then um, print some pictures that I want to add of them for throughout the year and I will be able to pack up my back to school stuff and move along um, checking off other layouts. So that'll be fun. I like to get all my back to school stuff done, of course, while this stuff is out so that I can put it away. If you saw my last video with the first back to school layout, then you know I keep everything bundled up tight in one of those little 12 by 12 pocket folder things. And I just love it. I'm really loving, oh, you see I've got some Smarty Pants spreads. I'm just trying to make my way through those. I've got an old schoolhouse blue sticker there on the bottom. I have no idea where that's from, but um, these little word cut-aparts, this is actually pattern paper, and I got it from Joann's. I have several sheets of it because I'm very um, in love with all those little words. I just, I use them, I've used them for years on pages and product projects, and I love them. Okay, so here you see from the Teacher's Pet Collection that I have pulled, I am going to add an epoxy bubble sticker to one of the elements. Flare was from my product jar, and so I want to make sure that gets on the layout. So I'm going to make my own. I'm going to cut out this stack of books. And the reason why I chose it is simply because I wanted some blue in that bottom right corner. And it's going to go right under the grade 6 sticker. I'm just going to add it there and cut it out. I'm liking the peaks of the fossilized amber oxide ink in the background with that stencil. Those are just a bunch of pluses. I was going to do stars, but you know, I thought I kind of used stars a lot, so the pluses were fun. And you know, I just needed any element there just to um, have some sort of um, a pattern on the back. And using a stencil with, you know, ink is a great way to do that. And the makeup sponge gives you a lot of control. You can see I just cut a small bit of it off and was just using the tiniest bit so that I had um, not too much outside the lines where I didn't want it to be, the ink anyway. So, yeah, and I just get those from the Dollar Tree. 
They're super inexpensive. I'm thinking about what I'm going to put. I, I eventually choose another bread because, well, that's a very easy decision. And I believe it is black. I'm going to add that down there. I've got another bread under the apple. And that has the number one, which for me signifies the first day. As you can see, I have one of those cut about cut apart words from the pattern paper that says first day right up there. I'm just going to layer it behind all those scraps. And, uh, yeah, like, just so cute. I mean, you know, the subject really holds all the weight in the, in the project, but, I mean, he's my handsome little dude. I just love him. And so, yeah, I think it's coming along great. I'm actually going to, yeah, I'm going to pop some of this one side of this up because uh, there's a lot of dimension with the paper on that wood circle with the apple. So I'm going to get some crochet twine. And while I have a minute here, you guys, I am going to remind you that I will have my social media links in the description box. I would love for you to head over to my Instagram page at Cut It Up Creations and my Facebook page and like my pages, see what I'm up to and um, can keep up to date on layouts and process videos as they're getting ready to go live. Uh, if you like this video too as well, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I would really enjoy having you. And so, yeah, as well as I am also, yeah, super excited because I am plugging along in my process videos. I'm very proud of myself. I was talking to my friend, I don't know if you guys know, but my friend Shelly, she's another YouTuber here. She's super great. I met her on YouTube and we've been friends for a lot of years. And yeah, she's just, she's so proud of me. And I am so proud of myself, really, um, because I put it off for so long and I'm so happy that I'm just decided to go all in. So. Um, what you see there to the right of the photo is a label, and on the label I stamped the date, which was the first day of school. Um, I'm using the My Favorite Things. They have a font called Bottle Cap, and it's a teeny tiny little six. I have the alphas too, the Bottle Cap alphas. Uh, the back two part in the title is cut with Lawn Fawn Coles ABCs. And neat and tangled journaling alphas are the word school, and it's all with a blue cardstock for my stash. So here are some close-ups. I'll actually have some photos at the end, and like I mentioned, I'll have my social media links in the description box. If you have any questions, just put them in the comments section below, and I'll do my best to answer them. And I really appreciate you watching, and I will be back with another project soon, and I hope you have a really great, wonderful week. Thanks guys.